Step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burned. Step out, step out of the sun because you learn, because you At first, I didn't notice her sitting in the room quietly. I was too busy. I had to look at the menu and decide what to eat. I was trying to figure out how not to disturb the needle they had put in my arm. I was too busy trying to adjust to my new and strange surroundings. After surgery to remove a mass from my abdomen, I was diagnosed with leukemia. The course of treatment was intense chemotherapy over several weeks. Away from my familiar bed, away from my warm home, I sat in a bland room with soapy smells surrounded by strangers. She sat quiet, patiently, waiting for me to notice. Through her came sunshine and natural light, which she made more intense. It brought me to her, to feel her comforting warmth that wrapped around my fragile body. She was a window, but she was no ordinary window. She was much bigger. She was much taller than me. Her width took up almost a third of the wall. At her base was a granite shelf wide enough for the little glass flower vase with a single yellow carnation. I stood in that warm light and looked out. People were living their day. I could see them in traffic trying to cross a bridge. I imagined they were probably frustrated, having to wait to go forward only to stop and wait some more. I thought, oh, they don't know how fortunate they are. They would cross that bridge and maybe tell jokes to their co-workers or go to a show. I saw the life I used to have. If I snuggled up close to her and looked down, I could see people walking below me. Some were in a great hurry, like the rabbit and Alice. Some meandered like small boats adrift on a lake, unsure as to where they were or where they were going. I heard voices and car doors closing. A woman waved frantically to a cab that refused to stop. I liked watching the clouds as they swirled and tumbled in the sky, teasing the sun's rays. Sometimes they looked like lovers on the blue field of a large lawn. Sometimes they looked like children chasing a soccer ball. Everywhere there was organized chaotic movement. Everywhere except inside my room. One night, I woke in the, to the whine of a small motorcycle. I looked out. The streets were empty. All of the red lights blinked in unison. I turned to go back to my bed, but not before I caught a glimpse of a man standing in my window. I thought, who is this person? A thin man with a bald head and thin cheeks looked at me. I could see faint lights behind him. I saw a woman quickly rush by. She looked like my sister-in-law, Jan Rose Crockett, who loved to tell people... Uncle Davy moved to Texas, and we ain't seen him since. <laughs> <laughs> the man had an inquisitive look. He seemed strangely familiar. Slowly, he smiled. I heard a little laugh. 
It was me looking at myself. Behind me, nurses were talking in the hallway. I had changed. My world was changing. In the darkness, I realized I needed a plan. I needed to stop watching. The next morning, I went window shopping. It was time to figure out what I was going to be, and my window was going to help me. She showed me the food cart vendor. I thought I would like to prepare food. She showed me the doorman, helping people in and out of cars. I liked the idea of helping people. She showed me a young couple sitting arm in arm on their sofa watching television. This was particularly helpful, and I was definitely going to do this. At night, we looked through my memories. We sorted them. Bad memories were discarded. Neither one of us had an interest in those. Good memories were put into the to-be-saved-and-embellished pile. <laughs> then there were fantasies. I asked my window, do you think I could learn to play an instrument? I decided when I got home, I would take guitar lessons. I began to walk more. I began to read more. I developed a plan to reinvent myself. I always had time to sit at my window and enjoy the view. When it came time to leave my room, it was not without some sorrow. She had helped me to see the possibilities. Now she would be there for the next patient. 